Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Red EDC. Well, I've told you that we're going to be checking out a few QSP knives here, thanks to the Apex Pass Around and David Blade Banter, Mr. QSP USA himself. Well, here's the next one. This is the Hornbill. Now, if you guys want multiple deployment methods, the Hornbill's got them. <laughs> we will definitely be checking out. Now, there are two different versions of the Hornbill. Obviously, this one, you have kind of have that blue shred carbon fiber. I, I wish the blue popped a little more. I do, I do have to say that. Uh, I just wished it, I mean, it does in the natural light, uh, but, you know, in this light, but even still, um, it's still kind of muted. So, I, I wished it would pop a little bit more, because the, the shred, blue shred carbon fiber, the red, any of them, uh, when they're really vibrant, man, they look really good. Now, there is also, I think they call it golden carbon fiber, which is is pretty much yellow and black. Um, so the two different color versions for that, or for the hornbill, that's what you're going to look at. You've got a milled pocket clip, titanium clip. Very nice. Pretty low profile. And we definitely are going to talk a little bit about that. Nothing too major. A lanyard hole slot, whatever you would like to refer to it as, but definitely making the lanyard fans happy there. Now, as you can see, we've definitely got some texturing going on in that handle, sort of scalloping or slight, you know, sunburst, if you will. I mean, it's and it's pretty, it's pretty rigid. Nothing, I mean, not crazy or anything like that, but it's definitely. Definitely some deep milling going on there. Now, the interesting part about this, and I did have to ask David, is because you have this spot here, and it does look like, you know, your milling radiates out from that. Even it radiates this way as well. You know, and it is on both sides. So, I, you know, right at first I was like, you know, that really looks like a spot where a button lock would go. It just really does. But since it's on both sides, I was like, well... Maybe, maybe not. You know, I asked David, and he said, no, it's strictly a design feature. Uh, you know, the, um, everybody he has talked to at QSP, he has posed that very same question. And they're saying, no, it was never really intended to be a button lock or anything like that. It's just a design feature. And seeing that it's on both sides, I, I can see that. You know, it just really looks like there needs to be a button lock there. But anyway... Um, everything chamfered off very well, and then there is a, a little bit of contouring going on. You can kind of see that, not a lot, but a little bit, especially with that milling. Um, overall grip is not bad. You know, carbon fiber, it's kind of, every once in a while I get some that are kind of slick. This one's not bad. Got a pretty decent grip to it. And then, let's look at our centering. Centering is... Pretty solid. Yeah, it's pretty good. Not too bad at all. Now, I was talking about opening methods. Well, you can see right there. You've got the hole for reverse flicking. You've got dual thumb studs. you got a front flipper. Yeah, this has got just about almost. I mean, if it had a flipper, you could. But it jumps out off those thumb studs. Really like that. It also jumps out off the reverse flick. It is, I mean, come on. I can reverse flick it, so... It's got to be easy to do, but it really jumps out off those thumb studs and off the reverse flick. Now, the front flipper could just be me. It's a little bit, I mean, it's not bad, not bad at all. Just to me, it feels like that detent is set a little bit more for the thumb studs and for the hole. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's not bad. It's not bad for the front flipper. Now, I... Of course, with me, shave that portion off and you got yourself a perfectly good knife. But hey, it's okay. It's it's pretty low profile. It's not really anything too egregious or anything like that. You know, it's pretty low profile. There you go. S35VN on the blade steel. Get it open. Pretty wicked looking blade there. I'm kind of digging that. Got a nice swedge. Got a really nice landing pad for your thumb. I am really, really becoming a, a fan of that cutout on the spine and a landing pad for the thumb. Now, if you don't want to go that far forward, um, you do have some pretty decent jimping there on a little bit of a ramp that gives you a perfectly good grip. 
But man, if you choke up on that finger choil and put your thumb on that spine, I mean, just some incredible control over that blade. So I'm, I'm really, and even in a normal grip, not choked up, even with my thumb out there, if I grab it, where does my thumb want to land? It just pretty much goes right to that spot, which I like. I like that a lot. So like I said, pretty decent forward finger choil as well. I've got plenty of room, as you can see there, left over. So very, very nice. Now let's zoom out. Let's take a look at, do a quick spec check here. So overall, what are we looking at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ah, pretty much right about seven and a half. Looking at about a four and a quarter inch handle, which should give us roughly a three and a quarter inch blade. Now, cutting edge is going to be shy of three inches, more like two and pretty close to two and three quarters on your cutting edge. So you do kind of lose just a little bit of that. Nothing too major on that, but, you know, I like a little bit, slightly more cutting edge, but... Nothing too major. You're just shy of the three inch mark, which in some states would be very good because of those restrictions that some have. Restrictions. There you go. There is your size comparison with the PM2. So PM2 is definitely a little bit bigger. Bug out should probably be just a little bit smaller. Yeah, not by much. Blades are pretty, pretty close. Uh, a little bit, but that's a little bit shorter in the handle area. But not too bad overall. Access to your lock, um, not bad. Could it be better? Yes. Yes, it could. You know, it, it's not terrible. You, you, you've got some jimping on there that, I mean, I really don't have to dig into it or anything to access the lock. My thumb kind of wants to it actually kind of wants to dig down deep in there a little bit especially you know going that route ceramic bearings by the way sorry about that bounce yep all right let's get a weight on it it was <laughs> it was funny uh i did a what do we got there oh, 3.8 a little bit more than i was expecting um not bad just a little bit more than I thought it would be. Yeah. Now, in your pocket, this is definitely one that is much better if you're over if you're over the top of it and can get some downward force on it. Now, I'm just kind of pushing this material around because I'm not wearing these pants. So there you go. Put it in there. Definitely over the top of. Like I said, it is kind of a low profile clip, so you don't have a lot. Of ramp there we'll look at that real quick but you definitely get the pop coming out absolutely the ramps okay but you know some some milled clips you know are a little bit better than others I mean this one isn't bad but like I said you know when you it, it's much better if you're over the top of it and can get some force going down it goes into the pocket fairly well and definitely pops on the way back out so it's not really going anywhere in your pocket so overall, what do I think? Um, actually, it's really comfortable in hand. Um, I'm always a little concerned when you get, you know, like these ridges and stuff going on. Now, I can feel the clip a little bit right in through here. A um, little bit more than I would want to, actually. Which really kind of surprises me because it's so low profile. Just must be the overall shape of the clip and the handle, I guess. But yeah. I do feel it down here uh, more than, and if I, you know, if I'm going to be using it and getting a good solid grip on it, that probably may become, I could maybe curse at that a little bit <laughs> later on, but you know, yeah, yeah I would. I, it, I'm definitely feeling it right there more than I want to. Now, if I choke up. In the choked up grip, that's not bad at all. I'm not really feeling anything back here. So, uh, yeah, I, not the biggest fan of the clip. We'll just say that. Uh, the deployment methods, the action, not bad at all. This one might need a little juice, you know, make it a little bit more droppy. I mean, it's got a good drop. There's 
and thank goodness you got a good finger to oil there. But detent is pretty darn solid for the thumb studs and the reverse flicker holder. It's not bad with that front flipper. It's really not. I'm just, I'm not overly thrilled with front flippers. Some I like better than others. Some are a lot easier than others. This one's pretty smooth. It's pretty easy. No issue with it at all. It's just, I don't know. Maybe it's the day of the week. Who knows? Who knows? But, okay, put it this way. If front flippers completely went away from here on out, I probably wouldn't be disappointed. But I'll just put it that way. I probably wouldn't be disappointed. But, you know, overall, not a bad knife. Now, this guy sells for right around 160 bucks. I believe it's 158 ish and change. So, S35, shred carbon fiber. You know, not too bad. Titanium clip. Um, I do like the knife overall. Not really a fan of the clip, though. Just the way the clip hits me it's not uh, not really jiving with it a whole lot but plenty of deployment methods you guys like front flippers thumb studs holes whatever it, it it's pretty much got it now if you're a, a regular old flipper fan well i'm sorry the hornbill might not be for you so but let me know in the comments what you think guys always appreciate you always always like subscribe, leave me that comment. You know I love talking to you. And until next time, guys, I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.